Hello and welcome to another House of Wisdom video and I'm just back from Blade Show 2018 and this video is a video designed to give my thoughts and impressions about Blade Show 2018. It was a magnificent time. There's a lot to like about Blade Show just out of function. First of all, Blade is a place where you can go and you can try out knives that you've been thinking about. One of the things that I do is I have a list of all the knives that I currently have, and this is just the end of the list. And then I have something called a wish lift, maybe a grail lift, but basically it's knives that I've seen or I've heard about and I might like to try out, but I really don't want to put my money down until I try them out. There are some knives that I'm going to want immediately, like whenever Brad Southard came out with his mini toque. I didn't need to know anything about it. I just put my money down and did it. But there's others that I want to try out. And some of the knives at Blade I tried out and I wanted to purchase that I've been thinking about purchasing. Other blades I just marked off the list. They were okay but it's not really what I was looking for or they weren't really of a caliber that I wanted to lay my money down and I just scratched them off my list. And I eliminated through either purchasing or scratching off the list two whole pages of my wish list and there's still some on there that I that I haven't gotten, so there's always new knives to buy, right? So that's one of the great things that you can try out knives that you think you might like, but you want to take a look at them first. The other thing I like about Blade is that um, you can try out knives that you know you want, but the maker has some inconsistent quality, and you would like to try out two or three knives to make sure you get a copy that's the perfect copy for you. And what I'll do is I'll go up to one and say, hey, give me a, and I'll state the name of the knife, and then I'll say, hey, do you have another copy or two that I can look at? And I'll try two or three copies, and one will maybe not have a great flipping action, and another will, and so I'll get the best iteration of it. So I like doing things like that. The other thing about Blade is that you can discover things that you didn't know ever existed just by walking up and down the aisles, for example. I didn't know that Bill Koenig and uh, the Koenig Knife uh, Company made the Mini Goblin, and I really liked it. And so that was one of those serendipitous things that, you know, I just fell in love with the knife, and I actually purchased one. And whenever I do my 2008 Blade Show scores, I'll show you that knife. And then you meet like-minded people. For example, uh, I was doing some interviews in the lines before they let us into the hallway and uh, I met a guy and he said he was Eugene from California and it was Eugene Kwan of Dashboard Reviews and I said hey I know you and I like your reviews and okay what's your name my name's Eugene Eugene where are you from I'm actually from Santa Clara California I also met Stasa from Stasa 23 there I met Tyler from Tavarish Works and I met Tyler in the exact place I knew I'd find him we met we were shoulder to shoulder at Andre Thorburn's booth because we both went there either our first or second place and we were both wanting to buy similar knives so uh, I said hey I know you you're Tyler and he didn't know me but once I mentioned House of Wisdom he had watched one or two of my videos so he knew of me and the other thing I do is we get to meet the subscribers I met the gentleman who loaned me for review this beautiful Gareth Bull Shamwari and after I reviewed it I wrote him and I said, uh, do you mind if I not return this to you and just buy it from you? And he was kind enough to buy it, let me buy it from him. And it is one of my favorite knives, the Garrett Bull Shamwari. And boy, these are hard to get a hold of. So I thanked him profusely for making my life so happy by selling it to me. And then uh, Blade Show had special challenges. There are some people that aren't fluent in English that are knife makers, for example, I met Sinkovich, who is the designer of one of my favorite production knives. This is the 450. And Sinkovich designed it for zero tolerance. He also designed the 460. And then this year is coming out the 470, which is a little larger knife from zero tolerance also. And I met him, but he doesn't feel comfortable doing interviews because he's uh, his primary language is Russian. And he, his English is a little bo broken, so I couldn't figure out a way to do a, an interview with him, which broke my heart. Another knife maker I met was David Dang, and he didn't feel comfortable doing an interview either. He spoke to me through a translator, but I, he's the owner of Riot Knives, and Riot Knives does such a great job with everything. Here's a Beggs 
mini bodega that Ria Knives makes. And uh, Jeepers, I wanted to get a, a, a story with him because he's the OEM manufacturer of so many great knives that I love, but I couldn't figure out a way to do it. What I did get was an interview with uh, Sergei Shirogorov. Here is a Shirogorov Neon Ultralight. Oh my gosh, the guy that made this action. It was such an honor to meet him. And his, his primary language is Russian. And I did an interview with him standing beside the, the translator that he had from Russia. And the translator was telling me about a Shirogorov F. Uh, 95 that he had there. There were not for sale any neons or hadions. They're smaller iterations. And I talked with both Recon One and Sergey and said, hey, you guys need to ramp up production of your neons and your hadions, your smaller knives. And they said, yes, we're well aware because we can't keep up with production. So they gave me a, a promise that they're going to be trying to produce more of these so there'll be more availability. Sergorov, it's great to see you at Blade 2018. Another guy that I did an interview with who didn't feel comfortable speaking English was the designer Anton Malashev, who designs a lot of custom knife factory knives. And he has such a clever knife that they were selling at Custom Knife Factory called the Terra. The knife is held together by one screw, which is the pivot. And uh, you hold down on the backspacer and you slide a pin out that secures the backspacer and the clip and the whole back of the knife and then the clip acts as a wrench that you take off the pivot with and so it's a self-contained knife with wrench and one pivot and it's very clever but I, sh I told him to show me how to disassemble it and then we put it all back together and I said okay I'm going to introduce you and then I'm going to have you disassemble the knife and use the clip as a wrench to disassemble the pivot and I'll do all the speaking for you, you don't need to do it so he, he allowed me to interview him in that way so it was great. So that's some of the cool things about knife show and some of the things that were challenges. I want to talk to you about some of the sad things about knife show. So the first table I wanted to go to was the Richard Rogers table. He has the Vector V2 and the Cinco, both of which I was really wanting to get. And I went there and there were no knives for sale. And I had a hunch about it because in line I was talking to some of the Roger Rangers. The Rangers is a group that formed, Richard didn't form it, they formed themselves, and they're just fans of Richard Rogers, and they said, no, Richard Rogers has a golden ticket system, and you have to be wearing a Richard Rogers shirt, and I didn't have a Richard Rogers t-shirt, so he had some for lottery, and then he had some for sale, but you had to have one of these golden tickets to get a Richard Rogers knife for sale, and I didn't have one. I tried paying one of the Richard Rogers fans any amount of money to buy his golden ticket and he absolutely refused to sell it and I understand it but I didn't walk away with a Richard Rogers knife unfortunately. Richard Rogers has the golden ticket which allows you a uh, priority to buy knives. Show us this golden ticket. Okay there it is. So how much are you going to sell me that for? Uh, I'm not. Oh no! Rejected! Rejected! No Reject amount of money is worth it. I know it. Okay. Another thing that broke my heart a little bit is family discord within knife makers. I was interviewing a knife maker. When I do an interview, I like to go over with them some of the distinctiveness about their designs. And I was going over with this knife maker about the things that made his knives distinctive. For example, uh, Greg Medford, he has really chunky, thick, beefy, overbuilt knives. I talk about that. Uh, Clyde Chalinor has this special proprietary pivot that you can use a, a penny or a slotted screwdriver on, but it looks proprietary. And Anyway, this knife maker, I was going over the things that were uh, distinctive about his designs, and he said, really, I would appreciate it if you don't mention those things because right now I'm in a lawsuit with my brother who has assumed control of my company and I think the intellectual property and uh, copyrights of those design ideas belong with that company and I, I don't want to do anything to complicate the court case. And it just made me sad that this knife maker who has his designs and his intellectual property didn't even feel comfortable talking about them on camera because he had some internal strife within family members. There's another knife maker who has recently retired and uh, he and his wife got divorced and he sold his half of the company. Of course, when you divorce, you know, and you have a family business, half goes the wife and half goes the husband, right? And he sold his half of the business to the wife, and now he's outed, and all of his designs and all of his work in building this knife company is now 
run by his ex-wife, and it just made me a little sad. First of all, that these designers don't have access to control their intellectual property and their designs, but secondly, that there's just strife either through sibling relationships or husband-wife relationships, and I wish that that wasn't what that way, but sadly it is. Okay, well, let's talk about some happy things now. Okay, after I got turned away and couldn't get a Richard Roger Knives, and believe me, I entered every lotto he had, I went over to the CRKT booth because uh, I thought about, well, let me see his production models, and I give the award for the best display booth to CRKT because they had this magnetic wall with artistic tracings of each knife and then the knife went on there and you just went up and uh, picked up the knife off of the magnetic wall and then put it back when you were done so I looked at the Richard Rogers knives the Quattro and the Maven and I was surprised I don't own a CRKT knife because I don't know I guess I just view them as having lower quality but they were very well done the flipping action was very good the G10 was very nice it was on IKBS bearings the pivots were the only downside was the steel was HCR 13 MOV and I just couldn't get over that lower in steel but oh my gosh they were smooth and they were only $70 each so really CRKT is doing a good job and I may need to look into getting a CRKT knife sometime the clever designs the wards goes to the CKF, the Custom Nice Factory Terra. As I mentioned, it only has one screw, the pivot, and then uh, the clip is the wrench that takes off the pivot. And as I mentioned, Ant Anton Malashev demonstrated it on one of the videos. You need to watch the uh, Custom Nice Factory video uh, on Meet Your Maker series. The next clever knife I thought was the Lion Steel ROK which had the disappearing clip, and the clip is based on a spring. You push it, and the clip pops out. But whenever it's in its relaxed position, the clip is totally flush with the knife so that there's no hot spots whatsoever. I thought it was a very clever design. And then thirdly, for the most clever designs, in my opinion, was the new Hawk Deadlock Out the Front Knife. It doesn't have any blade play in it. Uh, out the front knives are famous for you. You deploy them and then it has lateral and a back and forth uh, lock rock. But the hawk lock, because you had it in a wedge situation at the end, has no blade play at all. And uh, I just think Gavin Hawks, the, the bee's knees, he really does a great job with his designs. Okay, I'm going to talk about the best new makers. Joe and Angie Holt of Holt Blade Works are really great knife makers. Please watch their video and order their knives. They have one model, the Spectre, out now, which is a 3.6 inch blade. It was a little bit long for me, but the action on the knife and the fit and finish are amazing. And Angie does such a good job with anodizing the colors. And uh, they had a very cute story about how they got their Tormac, which weighs 2,000 pounds, down into their basement. <laughs> so watch the review on that. I think it's pretty entertaining. They've only been making knives since November, but oh my gosh, they're really good at doing it. And they have another smaller knife that's going to be coming out soon, but go over and check out Holt Blade Works. The other best new maker is, first of all, I have to uh, thank my subscriber, Troy, for introducing me. I had never heard of the guy. His name is David Myers of Effenberg Knives, and he's from Florida. And I had never heard of him because he's only made 16 knives of the Sigma model, which is his new models in his life, but Troy somehow had heard of him. And I went by his booth and, oh my goodness, the action on his knife is really Grimsmo and Shergar Smooth. It is just drop shut smooth. And he has only made 16 knives. Um, he says he's going to be sending me a knife for review. I hope that to get that up on my channel whenever it comes in, but you guys can be looking forward to that. Wow, so those are my two new makers, Holt and uh, David Myers of Effenberg Knives. I want to talk about Spyderco's knives. They made so many great knives that came out that are coming out. The Smock is really good. The Drunken is really good. It has this fine lines milling. It's a little larger knife. Its blade looks a little like the Spidey Chef, and oh, it's a wonderful knife. The Mantra 3 is a great knife. The Mantra 1 and 2 had a little bit uh, to lack on their flipping action, but um, 
Eric Glasser worked over the flipping action of the mantra. They have larger one millimeter bearings and they have bearing races and it's a flipper with a compression lock. I just want to let you guys, the Mantra 3, purchase it without reservations. It is a flipper delica with a compression lock and its flipping action is very adequate. The Techno 2 I also like. I really like the Sleash buoy, and the Techno 2 had some criti- the Techno had some criticism and it was a little bit too chunky. They slimmed down the Techno 2 and put a fuller on it. They uh, made standoffs instead of a backspacer, so it's a little bit lighter, and its flipping action is amazing. I saw the Paisan also, which is another uh, Resenti integral for people who like large knives. This will be the night for you. It's a little large for my liking, but those of you with big hands, get a Paisan. And I also looked at the Brower, which was a great one. Uh, it has an interesting maker mark. The maker mark is like the face of a jack-o'-lantern. Really interesting, the pumping of face. One of the things that saddened me, though, was the Spyderco Southern Hainan. Uh, it's flipping action. Well, I'll just show you a picture of it. So there's the flipping action of the Southern Hainan. And I went by and I was going to express my regards to Brad about, you know, my sadness that his uh, design didn't work out so good. And even before I got out my words, he said, oh, yeah, the Hainan, I know. And I got the prototype and I told him, is this a joke? You can't produce this. And they didn't listen to Brad and they went ahead and produced it anyway. So I, I don't like ragging on knives. I just want to warn you guys, if you like a great fi- flipping action, the Hainan is not the knife for you. Now, Spider Toe did a great job with the flipping action of the Southern and uh, Brad's mini toque that he did in-house also has a great flipping action, but the Hainan is not there, similar to the way the Positron was not there. Okay, things that I loved... There are three makers that broke my heart last year because they didn't bring any knives. Brad Souther, the Grimsmo brothers, and Andre Thorbone. And the thing that makes me so happy is that all three of them bought brought knives this year. And I saw people happily buying the Grimsmo knives and the Southern knives and the Thorburn knives. So thank you guys for bringing in knives. The other thing that was happy is that for my first time in my life, I won a lottery. Um, I entered several, and I typically don't win anything, but there was one of my favorite makers, Clyde Chalinor. Uh, he didn't have hardly anybody entering his lottery, and so I threw my name in there, and sure enough, I got called to win a, a Clyde Chalinor Talon. I also printed just one of his Hornets, which is a little smaller than a Talon. Instead of a traditional flipper, it's a front flipper. But I got, he said it was the last dragon scale he was ever going to make because the dragon scale blade, he says, takes one and a half days to make because you have to anodize it so many times through trial and error. He says it's really a a labor of love. So I got the last one that's ever going to be made by Clyde Chalinor. Also, because I got a couple of, knives of his I got some bling uh, because I was one of the first two people he got me this cool little pendant made out of damas steel it's probably just a little scrap that he shaped and made pretty but it is really pretty I'll probably put it on a necklace and give it to one of my daughters for their birthday they'll like that the other bling I got from Clyde is he got me a Clyde Chalinor t-shirt there we go Clyde Chalinor custom knives and it has his his pivot there you can see like his pivot and uh So I got some bling from Clyde. Thank you so much, Clyde. It was a lot of fun, that. Okay, the knife maker with the most loyal fan base and the most rabid fans. Wow, I did a video where I just interviewed people at the front of the line on the first day. These are people that arrive at like 5 a.m. to get first in line. And the most rabid fans are the Peter Kohler Dark Timber Knives fans. They call themselves a brotherhood. And I'll show a picture of Peter Kohler. And then his fans were like all around him whenever I was doing the interview. And they have such a a community, such a brotherhood. It made me want to grow a beard and get a tattoo. Really, these guys are a lot of fun. You got to watch the interview that I did with him. And the other big fan base is Richard Roger. They were right there at the front of the lines, too. They call themselves the Rangers, and wow, there are so many people wanting Richard Roger's knives. This guy works 60 hours a week, and he still can't keep up with uh, the amount of knives that people want of his. Okay, my favorite sub-$500 knives that I found was the Beg Mini Glimpse. Oh my gosh, it is such a pretty knife. It's got such good fit and finish, and its action is as smooth as glass. If if I had, I think I'd consider that my best value knife. It was only 
uh, 400 to 450 depending on the finishes that you had, but it is really a home run. The other ones I felt were the great values was Ramon Chavez uh, has a production knife now by Riot. Actually, he has three, the Redención, the Sangre, and the Liberty. And I asked him, you know, the first two productions have Hispanic names, and you said Liberty instead of Libertad, and he just said, oh, well, I just decided to name it that. He didn't really have a good idea. But the last two, the Sangre and the Liberty, have flippers, which is his first attempt at making flippers. But Riot did these guys, and guys, let me tell you, the action is just Riot perfect. Uh, and they're going for about $300, so you don't have to spend $1,000 for that Ramon Chavez distinctive clip with the skull. You guys know what I'm talking about. And the other great bargain I thought was Enrique Peña. Uh, he has a production Lanny Clip flipper made by Riot also that's going for about 300 to 350 And I looked at it, and the fit and finish are perfect. I have a, a, a Peña Barlow that I spent about $1,000 for, and the Riot really did a good execution of it. So there are some knives that are no contest. The, the uh, Makers is so much better than the production that you really wouldn't want to mess with the production. But Riot did such a good job on Ramon Chavez and Enrique Peña's production knives that uh, feel free to get those if you want that style of a knife. Okay, my favorite expensive knife was a Thorburn. I got an L54 with these beautiful hand-engraved bolsters. I'll be showing it to you. The other one was a Serendipity knife, which was the Koenig Mini Goblin, which goes for $550, and it's just a little over $500, but I had to put it into the expensive category, under and over $500. The Mini Goblin uh, has, it's small, but it's a, it's a collaboration with Koenig and Sharp Knife Co., and it has a Warncliffe blade. The action is just famously smooth, so wow, I really like that one. Okay, I'll talk about the one that got away. The one that got away from me, uh, there was some German knife sellers in the secondary hall selling a uh, Cheberkov toucan, which I had known about, but I hadn't ever flipped, and ooh, those Russians really know how to do their knife actions. It's Shirogorov like And I was on the wall about getting it, and I went back at about 30 minutes before Blade Show closed, and Fort Henry Knives had beat me to it, and they purchased it for resale on their website. So I missed out on that one, but it was a good one, but it got away from me. It also, like the Shirogorov knives and the Clyde Chalinor, these both use slotted screwdrivers but have uh, proprietary pivots, the Chebrikov toucan has a proprietary pivot too, but it's uh, you can use a slotted screwdriver or a coin to undo it. So I really like that, but the action was great on the knife. Okay, the happiest knife surprise that I didn't know existed, as mentioned, was the Koenig Mini Goblin. And the knife that I thought that I wouldn't like, but I did like after trying it, was the Arc Form Slimline. It goes for $350. Also, I tried their Catalyst, which has got a three and a half inch blade. It goes for 265. Both the Slimline and the Catalyst, I love their actions, and I believe Riot makes them for uh, Arc form. But uh, I actually ended up buying a Slimline because I liked its actions so much, even though I didn't think that I'd like it. I fell in love with it. So, anyway, those are my thoughts and impressions from Blade Show. Uh, give me your thoughts and impressions, and I loved it when you guys came up and introduced yourself and I got to meet you as subscribers. That was one of my favorite parts too, so uh, let me know in the comments section what you liked about Blade Show and what grails you got, and uh, we'll have a nice conversation and dialogue. So, well, that's the video for today. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next House of Wisdom video.